Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. everybody hail and welcome back to this week's episode of the random heathen ramblings podcast thanks for tuning in as always and showing your support in all of the ways that you do um hope you guys have been having a a good month of march you know we've uh we've kicked off the month with some pretty chilly weather here in the middle tennessee area um this past weekend's meet up with a bunch of local uh, and regional pagans and heathens uh to talk about the concepts of death in the afterlife was a, was a chilly one for sure. You know, it was a little windy. Uh, the temperatures were in the upper 40s, low 50s. And it was overcast, you know, and it was, a, it was definitely a reminder that we're not quite there yet. Uh, springtime's not quite here yet. Um, but we are getting longer days now because of the, the DST, the daylight saving time. Um, so we are getting an extra hour of daylight now, and, you know, it feels like the days are, are longer and... Uh, you know, they, we're not out. We're not out of the woods yet, for sure. We've, we've, we've definitely got some potential for cool and colder weather. This, the rest of this week has been, you know, right around what it typically should be for the for the later parts of the winter, early spring. But you know, we still got the rest of this month, and even into April. Believe it or not, here in the South, can get, you know, be a bit unpredictable. We've had uh, fr- freeze warnings or, or frost warnings all the way into April. I've even seen it snow a little bit here. So, you know, we're, we're definitely not out of the woods yet. But um, suffice it to say, you know, the days are getting longer and we've got look, you know, we can look forward to longer and warmer days to come. Um, I'm going to apologize ahead of time in case you guys notice my, my voice may go in or in and out a little bit, just dealing with, again, because of the way the weather goes, you know, some days it's 70 degrees, some days it's 30 degrees, and it just goes all over the place. Um, my voice is maybe a little, you know, <clears throat> in and out because of the, the weather fluctuations. There's like this upper respiratory thing that I'm trying to, to, uh, to, to, to fight a bit. Um, I don't get seasonal allergies, at least I don't think I do. Um, but it's mainly just, you know, up in here. So I may sound like a, a, a raspy old man every now and then. But anyway, um, we are here today to um, discuss a couple of things that really didn't come from any particular inspiration. Um, you know, no comments, no, 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 nobody writing in, um, which as a reminder... If uh, if you guys didn't know, if this is your first time listening or watching, um, you can write in recommendations for the podcast. You can call in recommendations to the podcast if you have topics that you would like to hear more about. Um, you can email MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. Uh, and you can also call 615-671-9832. You can remain anonymous in either one of those ways. You know, So writing in to me, you can just share an idea or a thought. Um, and same way as calling, you can remain anonymous. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want, we can share your voice on the podcast. I'd love doing that because it's great. Um, it's a great way to, again, just, just share ideas and thoughts and and get people's voices heard, um, out here on, on the larger spectrum of things. But again, this, this particular topic doesn't come from any one of those sorts of things. Um, But it's a topic that I don't recall ever having done a video or a podcast on before. So, you know, I thought, why not? Let's explore it. Um, And it's the topic or or, or the, yeah, the topic is that of guilt versus shame. (coughs) And here we go right off the rip with with the hacking and the coughing. So bear with me, guys, as we go through the rest of this episode. Do the best that I can. Uh, to be as least disruptive as possible. But um, yeah, this guilt versus shame um, and how it fits into 
a heathen worldview? Um, does it fit into a heathen worldview? Is there a place for such things? Um, and so I wanted to talk about that this week and at least give you my perspective on it and open it up for discussion and give you guys some things to think about. Uh, so before I do go into this, I realize um, that this particular topic is, is, is a larger non-heathen related topic. You know, we're talking about things of, of, um, of a psychology, uh, perhaps, yeah, psychology uh, realm, you know, and I, and I am not by any means or any stretch of the of the definition, a psychologist. I've I've not studied the the, the human mind, <laughs> um, or or any of those sorts of things, um, or the or the way the human mind works, uh, in in any sort of academic or professional degree. Um, so bear that in mind as you listen and watch the rest of this. That uh, you know my views are coming strictly from just conversations I've had. Um, you know the my experiences, right? So, um, and I, and, you know, th this is not going to be one of those episodes that I have any <clears throat> technically any, you know, source material. Cause again, we're talking about things of, of the human psyche of the human mind, um, things that are going on, you know, within ourselves or, or within the communities around us. Um, so I won't have any like, you know, well, you can read about here in this, you know, literature or in this, poem or in this, you know, whatever piece of, of academic work. Um, I'm sure there's there's probably examples of, of, of that existing for this particular topic. I just haven't come across them yet. So um, as I go through this, and if you have anything that you want to share in the comments and, you know, write in or, or whatever, then feel free to do so. Um, but yeah, so guilt and, and, and shame, you know, I think a lot of times this these words get, you know, um, they get they get used interchangeably uh, many many times. There's, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be like that, guys. I'm sorry, um, but there's there's uh, you know cases where um, guilt and shame get get you know the terms get used interchangeably, um, perhaps to mean the same thing. But I I see a definite difference um, between the two of those uh, things. So, you know, for me, uh, and I think just, a, you know, a, a basic or general understanding is that, you know, guilt is something that is, um, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to go, you know, you guys can look up the, the dictionary definitions of these words, you know, what guilt is or what shame is by definition in the Merriam-Webster, the whatever version of the dictionary that is being used or referenced nowadays. Um, but the way I see it is that, you know, uh, guilt is for the person that is, you know, dishing it out in, in a way. And I'll, and I'll maybe get into some <coughs> uh, ideas or examples of, of somebody that's being guilted or, or trying to guilt someone. It's not for that person that's on the receiving end. It's, it's, it's more for the person that's dishing it out, you know, on, on the giving end. Um, whereas, you know, shame is, is, is something that could potentially be beneficial to that person that is receiving it, you know, to be shamed, um, or to, to feel shame, um, you know, for, for, for something that is being done. Um, you can make someone feel ashamed of doing something, you know, ridiculous, stupid, ill-advised, um, without making them feel guilty. And I think there's a big, <coughs> there, there's, there, therein lies, you know, the, the big difference. Because guilt, again, it has, it does have morality, definitely tied into it. Um, and in certain religions, I think for sure, um, it, it is definitely a thing that, you know, when, to, to guilt someone or to make someone feel guilty, um, it's, it's used as a method of, of, of control. And I, and I think this is going to be the, 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 the particular areas of focus <coughs> that I want to, you know, pay attention to here. Assuming that I can make it through here without uh, hacking up a lung. So shame is for correction. Um, we, 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 we can look at it in, in that context is that, you know, to, to, sh to shame someone or for someone to feel shame can be for their benefit and it can be for them to 
you know, correct the issue. Um, we're at, we're in, in opposition. Guilt is for control. So we're looking at, you know, guilt versus shame, control versus uh, correction. And this is a, again, just a, a non-heathen perspective of it, but I think it can fit uh, into our heathen worldviews and, in, and into some of our uh, heathen circles or, or tribes or kindreds even um, appropriately. So let's look at an example. Right? Like, let's say you want to look at just a non-heathen example of it. If, if, um, if, you know, let's say we've got a family, mom, dad, and a child. And the child is, uh, is uh, you know, wanting a, a cookie <laughs> before dinner. And the child steals the cookie without the parent knowing, you know, goes behind their back, sneaks into the cupboard, into the, into the drawer, into wherever the, the thing that they want is kept and they steal it. Um, if, if guilt is implemented and in, in, in a guilt culture approach, the thing that is being sought is to purposely or purposefully create inner turmoil for that for that person right because we can see that that that's what guilt is it's, it's that inner turmoil i feel guilty for having done xyz because i am i am guilty of doing it right so you 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 made a mistake you 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 transgressed you you broke the law whatever and if you actually did it then you are guilty um but the inner turmoil that is that is created in guilt culture is again coming from the person that is uh, doling it out in order to, in a way, right, prevent that behavior from recurring. So, you know, you could look at it, you know, once the parent discovers that this child um, stole a cookie out of the cookie jar or, or, or took what was not supposed to be theirs, they would perhaps in a, in a guilt culture sort of way um, – say something like, oh, you know, you doing that made me feel really, really sad. You know, you don't ever want to make me sad again, do you? You don't want to disappoint me. You, you see what you did was wrong, right? And it, and it, and it puts, <coughs> it puts the, the focus on perpetuating and creating that inner turmoil and just and feeling and making that person feel really, for lack of a better term, just, just really shitty. So as a result um, of that, you know, the the perpetrator, we'll put in this case the child for having stolen that cookie, is going to feel guilty over, first of all, just doing what they did, which as a result hurt the person whom they love in a way, right? It hurt their feelings. It, it, it negatively impacted them. And so that child may not ever, theoretically, they may not ever, you know, repeat that action again, not out of the reason that they've learned that it's wrong, um, but that they want to prevent any doing anything in the future that's going to hurt that person, right? So it's not out of, I've learned my lesson, I see what I did was wrong, and that's why I don't want to do it again. It's, I'm being chastised and scolded and made to feel a you know, feel really, really bad inside. And, and because of that, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that thing again that's going to make me feel this way or put a bad feeling on, on someone that I care about, right? So there, there's an example, I think, of, of what we could say as, as guilt. Now, shame could be seen as the thing that is, you know, same way. It's, it's pointing out to that child that stole that cookie that they did something wrong. It's not that, look what you've done to me. Look how you've hurt me, you know? Look what you've done to make me feel bad, you little piece of gra garbage, you, you, you little bastard, you, you little whatever, you know? Look what you've done. See how it made me feel? Instead, it's look what you've done that's wrong, and here's why. That cookie, right? We're going to just go back to that example of that kid, you know? Here's what you did that was wrong because that cookie doesn't belong to you. It's not for you to take. You've done something wrong and you and it's wrong because it's not yours. You didn't 
you know, it, it, it's not for you to, to just up and take something that, it, that doesn't belong to you. You know better than that. I've raised you better than that. You know better than that. You know that you're supposed to ask first. You're supposed to wait until after dinner, right? Whatever the, you know, again, I'm, I'm using hypothetical examples here, but I think that the, 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 the lesson is, is, is well enough established here that shaming the child, saying that you know better than this, you've been taught better than this, you know, I've raised you to be better than that. You don't do stuff like this because of the fact that it's wrong and here's the reason why. It's not that, you know, you little hellion, you know, what is wrong with you? Look at, look at how you made me feel. Look what you've done, you know. It's, it's a different approach and it's for a different reason. And, and the shame part is, is, yes, you've done something wrong. You should pay for the wrong that you've done. There is, there is, there is a punishment, uh, you know, that, that needs to be implemented for having done the wrong thing. Um, but the shame is what you feel. And, and, and that is a way that I feel is, um, going to con correct the behavior to prevent it from happening again, uh, versus using, using, using a method that is, that is, that is, that is by, by inherent design, a, a way of controlling somebody. You know, um, and from a heathen perspective, <coughs> excuse me, you know, I think that shame culture has an absolutely valuable and valid place in and, in and amongst our, our, our worldviews, you know, um, without, without law, without order, without, you know, creating that that system that corrects wrongdoing, we run the risk of having everything just just flopping around and, and, and having no structure, having no control, having no order. And I hate, you know, say control, not in the sense of what I was talking about before where, you know, guilting somebody and, 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 and being controlling over them. But, but, but again, having that sense of order, having that sense of decency, lawfulness, right? Um, it, it goes back to ancient Germanic worldviews that, you know, what happens within a lawful society is that which is good. And so what is good is considered to be lawful. When you act lawfully, when you act good, you are, you, you are behaving in a way that is honorable, uh, virtuous. Your worth is higher. Your worth is, is, is more um, and, and, it, and worth is, is something placed on you by the people, by society, you know, so by your, um, by your, by the community, by, by your tribe, perhaps, you know, if we look at it now today too, um, you know, you are worth more to your tribe if you are abiding by the rules and, and doing things that are within the lawful order or construct of your inner inner yards or, or of, of that of that tribal structure uh, goes back to an old word that I've talked about a little bit in the past but that, that old English word thu meaning law so thu is, is is law and it is the it is it is the thing to be abided by right we're to abide by the law we're to follow the law and when you break the law when you break the rules then you should be you should expect to feel ashamed for having done so not because it hurt everybody else's feelings or that it you know you're 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 a terrible little pos for doing it but you should feel shame and and be ashamed um and uh for doing it because of the fact that you have broken that that lawfulness that that trust you have broken that uh that thing that has been established as being something to hold the society, hold your tribes luck together and, and hold everything uh, where it should be for benefit of everybody else, you know? So without shame, there, there, there's no real incentive, there's no reason to, to pre be, you know, prevent yourself from doing it. If, if you can f just you know, freely go about doing anything that, we, that you care to do and, and not 
you know, get any sense of, of repercussion, right? if there's no consequence to what you're doing, if, there's, there's, if you're not shamed for, for doing wrong or doing something that is against that which is lawful, that which is good, then it's just, you know, it's, it's the Wild West and you just, you know, everybody does whatever the hell they want. And there's, again, there's, there's no repercussion. There's no consequence. There's no balance and it's unlawful and it's lawlessness and everybody, it's, it's anarchy, you know, everybody just does, like I say, whatever the hell they want. So, uh, again, I like, I look at it as, as, as a very valuable thing, uh, or something potentially of value when, when done rightly. Um, you can, again, you can run the risk especially in modern heathen tribes. And I, I saw something one time about <coughs> why we think or why people, why is it that, you know, why do you think that, that modern heathen kindreds, modern heathen tribes tend to just fall apart and tend to have, you know, little to no duration. Like they're, 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 they're not around for very long. You, you see groups pop up here or there and then they fizzle out and they don't last. Why is that? And I, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with ego, hubris, um, various things that of, of the human, everybody wants to be in charge, everybody wants to be great, everybody wants to do, everybody wants to be known for something, but, but not a lot of people are willing to put in the work to do the things that a thrall would have to do in order, before being seen as, as, as kingly or as uh, somebody of a, of a higher esteem. You know what I mean? Uh, not a lot of people want to put the work in. And so when the work isn't done and when those foundations aren't laid, um, it's, it, there, there's, no, there's no way for, for things to, to grow. You know, um, I've had conversations with other people uh, at other times, some of which I've shared a little bit on this channel and, and maybe not in recent podcasts, but over the years, that you know, heathenry is 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 grassroots. It is it is something that needs to be first of all established at the grassroots level, nurtured at the grassroots grass, grassroots level, furthered at the grassroots level, um, and maintained that at that level. And without putting in the work, without boots on the ground, without the actual doing of things, if it's all just talk, 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 yak, 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 you know, and no, and no deeds, no doing, uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't stand a chance. Um, and, and, and to, 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 to speak to the topic at hand, you know, when, when things are done that are, that go against what has been established as being the right and good and lawful thing to do within these smaller circles, within these smaller kindreds, groups, tribes, what have you, you know, when, when things, when, when, when someone or, or, or when a group or, or when, when people violate the, the, the rules, if there's no, if there, if there, if there's not, you know, the opportunity to be ashamed of that and to, and to know why that wrong was done and then be given the chance to correct it, there, there's, I don't think there's, there's any opportunity for growth because that is fact, right? Like that's, that's the truth of it. You're going to make mistakes. Things are going to be done that are wrong and you've got to pay the shield. You have to pay that recompense. You have to pay the, the wear guilt as it were, you know? So if, uh, if things are stolen, you need to pay it back. If, if, if life was taken, you had to pay it with a life or, or do whatever the, the the recompense was for that crime you know do the crime do the time <coughs> excuse me and be ashamed of it be ashamed of it and and if you're not then you know that 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 could be a another topic or that could be another thing but if you you know if 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 you don't feel ashamed for having done wrong then uh maybe you know maybe that group isn't for you or you're not for them because again it goes back to what you've done has now uh you know negatively impacted the the collective the overall um society 
right? It's not about how it made them feel. It's about what was wrong and why it was wrong. You know, you did this thing that was against our customs. It was against our thu. It was against our, our law. And you should be ashamed of yourself for it. You should be ashamed. You know better than this. You came into our group knowing full well what our customs were. You know and, and you are fully aware of, of what is expected of you. You know, and uh, you have failed to do so. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And I remember as a kid too, you know, um, especially as we got older, maybe some other folks here will remember what it was like growing up, you know, when, uh, when, when you disobeyed your parents, when you, when you went against their wishes and uh, did things that were against the rules, broke the rules, you know. What was one of those things that uh, used to hurt us more than the punishment was knowing that we were uh, that, that we that we brought shame to our parents, right? I'm not. It's not that I'm mad. It's that I'm disappointed. I'm not mad at you. I'm ashamed of you. You know, or you know that sort of thing. And <clears throat> that's a powerful. <clears throat> that's a powerful thing. Um, for any sort of unit, right? Like whether whether it's a family, the clan, um, the larger, broader extension of that family. Um, same, same thing applies, I think. Um, if, if we're not held to a standard, if we're not held accountable for our deeds, then as I said before, it's just the Wild West. Anybody just does whatever they feel like doing. It's uh, no consequence, no repercussion, and that could be a problem. Um, it definitely can be a problem. So i uh, going to take a quick break. I want to give you guys a message from a recent... Um, project, a recent volunteer program that is that is surfaced out of Appalachia, but it is open. It is it is wide open to the world. It's not just a regional or local thing. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. Uh, here's some words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. So today's episode is brought to you by Appalachia Animism, and more specifically, the Sacred Trail Society, an affiliation. Uh, volunteer program of the Appalachia or Appalachian Animism uh, site. So the Sacred Trail Society is a volunteer-based community effort for environmental awareness and custodianship. Volunteers work hands-on in local communities, uh, public wildlife spaces, trails, and waterways, parks, and greenways, practicing and encouraging a personal responsibility for ourselves and fellow humankind in the shared wildlife spaces for all life to enjoy. Although we are a part of nature, we only visit these places while the plant and animal life there call it home. All trails may be considered sacred in their own right, but even more so for their potential to host meaningful experiences for any who visit or travel them. The plant and animal life that reside there and the spirits of all who lived there before contribute to the experience and offering of an opportunity to connect there. Preservation of the natural and wild spaces we share with the earth, water, sky, and all its inhabitants are of the utmost of importance in our mission. Natural, wild spaces are in constant decline as the push to develop land increases. Therefore, the opportunity to share in enjoying them is dwindling giving us all the more reason to take care of them, doing what we can to maintain them. Keeping the land and water clean from trash, litter, and leavings that do not belong there also helps to keep the air clean and the native plant and animal life healthy. Taking part in this effort and movement is as simple as bringing a bag along with you when visiting these spaces in your local community collecting trash or litter others have left behind, and disposing of it properly and responsibly. The wildlife will thank you, as will the next person that visits and is able to enjoy the space as it should be, free from litter. 
The Sacred Trail Society volunteer efforts do not include streets, highways, interstate cleanup, or roadways with motor vehicle traffic. Please use common sense and do not risk your safety to reach an area where dangers are present. So if you want to be a part of the Sacred Trail Society, you guys can visit um, uh, AppalachiaAnimism.com. You can share your efforts with the larger communities wherever you are in the world uh, by posting photos of you cleaning up the land um, in nature near and where you are and using the hashtag Sacred Trail Society on your social media. So check it out. Details are in the description and show notes of this podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Let's get back to the show. Guys, welcome back. Um, hope you enjoyed that little break of sponsorship messages, etc. As I say, sponsorship. You know, um, the neat thing about what I just, what you may have just heard, um, Sacred Trail Society. Um, you guys have heard me talk about Fjallvatir Workshop. Um, Papa Olafson been out there to. Uh, his his residence in the the Blue Ridge Mountains, and this is this is largely his doing. Um, my name and and my tribe's name has been attached as co-founders of the Sacred Trail Society, but it's 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 mainly his and and his wife's efforts to launch this volunteer uh, community program. So do be sure to check it all out. Um, doesn't cost you anything, but it it. it the, 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 the return that you get from being involved, you know, I mean, I do um, almost every day of the week, I'm, I'm, I'm out here walking the greenway and, and, and stuff near the house. So, you know, being out here and, and taking care of the land being like, it was mentioned before the, the custodians or the stewards of this land, you know, and, and doing things to help upkeep the place, you know, and then, and, and it's, and it's a great segue into the topic today, because you know, when I'm out here, and I'm sure you all have, have had these feelings too, when you're out in nature and you see the remains of human filth, trash, things that are not biodegradable or things that just litter the world, uh, I am ashamed. It, 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 it hurts me to see that there are people out here who give little to no regard for their home, because this is our home too, guys. This is our home. This planet is our home. There ain't another one out here. It ain't like, you know, well, when 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 the pipes bust and the roof leaks and whatever, we can just sell it and move somewhere else. No, this is our home, and it's been our home, and we're, we're treating it really poorly, you know? And I can't help but wonder, you know, if, if this is the way that you're going to treat the land, then what would how do you treat your your own living space you know i would love to to catch someone just carelessly discarding trash however big or small you know instead of holding on to it bringing it to a, a trash trash receptacle right doing you know again disposing of it responsibly uh, and safely I, I i would love to 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 see these people right then and there in person and shame them for what they're doing, right? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Pick that up. Put it in your pocket. Carry a bag with you. I, I was out on the, uh, on the greenway today, and, and you're going to love this. Um, you know, people walk their dogs. There's a, there's a dog park not too far down the road, and that's great. You know, get your dogs out. Um, and they, and they, uh, you know, they do their business, as, as animals do. No big deal. Um, and people actually have the, they, they, they go through the effort of, of picking up their animals, you know, crap, putting it in a bag. And then I shit you not, the dogs did it, but I shit you not. There was a bag of animal dung, okay, left right on the side of the greenway. I'm like, you went through the effort of picking it up and then just left it there. You might as well have just let the shit lie where it was because at least that's biodegradable. And then you, now you put it in this plastic bag that's not eco-friendly. So you, you, you know, what, what, whatever idea you had to pick it up, trying to, you know, clean up after my pet. Yeah, but then in the interim, you just made litter and you, and, and you made the situation worse. 
I tell you, man, like the whole shame thing, like, you know, you should know better than this. <laughs> These people ought to know better than this. And if they don't, then, man, they need some help getting educated because you ought to know that, you know, <clears throat> fecal matter is biodegradable. It's going to it's going to break down. It's going to return back into the earth and do whatever it does. But at least with that, you know, we kick it off the road, maybe kick it out of the way of, of people's walking paths, you know, flick it off into the wood line or something, but don't put it in a plastic bag. That's not eco-friendly. That's not biodegradable. And then just leave it there. You know, you people ought to be ashamed of yourselves. And, you know, have half a mind of just sitting out there and watch people with soda cans, beer cans, bottles, food wrappers, things. And then, you know, they get done eating it and they're too freaking lazy to carry it to the next garbage pail that they see. Instead, they just chuck it into the woods or off, off to the trail. It's 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 sad. So, yeah. Those people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Um, but, 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 you know, what are you going to do? We're not going to fix it. This is a, this has been an ongoing problem for, you know, literally all of, of, of time, I think, really, since humans have taken up residence here. You know, there, there's always going to be places where the remains of, of mankind, less than savory parts, are, are, are left. So what can we do? You know, we can sit here, we can gripe about it, or we can do something about it and... This is one way of doing it, you know, being an example, showing an example, inspiring other people to do it too, not just to to walk by, look at it and go, oh, isn't that sad? Isn't that pathetic? That's horrible. I hate that. Well, let's let's do something about it. Carry a bag with us, you know, carry that trash with us and then get rid of it, dispose of it properly and responsibly not leave it on the trail for it to just be of detriment to the local wildlife, to the spirits, to the vetir of the land, you know. That's been a topic here recently too, right? How to honor the vetir, the land vetir. Here's a way to do it. Help keep their home clean. They will appreciate it, and I think good will come of it for those of us that are in tune enough to, to want to, to do good. Um, and to be good for them. And it's a benefit for all of us, you know. Like I said, this is our home too. We share space with them. And uh, if you wouldn't leave your home in such a, a trashy state, and I sure hope you wouldn't. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been in some people's homes that make me question. Um, but, hey, you know, if you wouldn't leave your house in, in such a trashy state, then why would you do that? Um, to the, to the, to the, to the forces, to the spirits that were here before you were. It's very disrespectful. It's not very, it's not very cool of you, man. It's not very bright. It's not very good. You should be ashamed. That's what you do. So anyway, I would love to hear what you guys think about it. This is a relatively short episode, um, mainly just because I'm struggling to get through talking, um, but I didn't want an, a week to go by where. Uh, you guys didn't have anything to at least ponder, think about, share with your your people, um, have conversations about it yourself. So I would love to know, where do you guys see the the separations, the differences between guilt culture and shame culture? And does one or the other or both or, or neither have a place in our heathen worldview? I, for one, think that shame culture is a valuable part of our heathen worldview. I think it definitely has a place when done rightly. I don't think guilt culture uh, has a place because, again, it's, 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 it's about correcting. and It's not about control. The guilt thing leans more into the control aspects of things and, and wanting to be in control or, or have control over someone or someone's, uh, whereas the shame culture is more derived from a place of wanting to correct and show, hey, you're wrong, here's why. You ought to know better than that, and now let's fix it. Find the way to correct it. Um, so thank you all for, for kind of putting up with my random heathen coughings <laughs> uh, today. It's, it's, it's been a little challenging to try to not to just 
leave my lungs out here on this table. But um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you're listening to this on any one of the podcast platforms, and you can give it an upvote um, or or add it to a playlist or do something that that helps increase its 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 reach, um, I would greatly appreciate it. Especially sharing it uh, is a great way um, of doing that. So. If you have thoughts, you can, again, call in 615-671-9832. You can email the podcast, MidgardenMusingsTN at gmail.com. Or you can also uh, message me or, or leave comments on any of my various social media platforms. All of those are linked in the Linktree link that's annotated in the podcast notes description, um, as well as in this video that you're watching here on YouTube. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching or listening to this week's episode. And until we hear from each other again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>